Hello and welcome to a very uh, interesting video. It's going to be a short one. Uh, it's going to be concerning the multicolonarity. I hope I'm pronouncing this word correctly because of the many sound in it. Uh, colonarity, colonarity, multicolonarity. Uh, what does that mean? I'm sure you've noticed uh, what it means in the previous video that I attached to the class. However, we want to repeat that one more time that uh, traditionally, if we have a dependent variable like y and x uh, uh, or multiple uh, independent variable like x1 and x2 and x3, we would like to have a correlation between the independent variable and the rest of the uh, I'm sorry, the dependent variable and the rest of the independent variable. But when we face a problem, if we have a correlation that is high among the independent variable themselves, which means they might, or more likely in this case, they can predict each other. We don't want to really... Uh, the multi-colonarity to exist among the independent variable themselves uh, due to the high correlation uh, between them. So what we want to make sure that if we have a high multi or you could say it actually, collinearity, a lot of people refer to it without the multi, then we should be able to really test for that and somehow uh, you know, deal with those variables that they depend on each other or explain each other instead of allowing that dependent variable to be uh, the one that, I mean, the, one of them that instead of explaining each other, they should be explaining that dependent variable because the dependent variable is really the one who going to be calculated based on these values. So when we have multiple independent variable that is repeating themselves or doing each other uh, a job, then we, are, we have to really uh, deal with the multi -clonarity. I'm going to go ahead and show you this example, very short, very easy, and then we're going to take another example, also very <coughs> short and very easy. One of the things that we have to realize in order for multi to exist, it has to be into multi multiple uh, linear regression or multiple regression in general. The fact that I can't really have one single uh, simple uh, regression with one single independent because that immediately eliminate the ideas of multi -colonarity. There is no two variables to be dependent on each other anyway. So in, in this case, I have this one is going to be an X1 uh, in the year of the schools. And this one here is that uh, second independent variable that the salary depend on both of them. So the salary, I made it very easy in order for us to uh, make this data in order to see the clarity of the as an obvious example, uh, the salary is sixty thousand dollar when people actually finish two uh, year of school and uh, they read like five books every month. And uh, you notice here the number of the year of the school is uh, uh, goes up. This is goes up, and this is goes up. Before we do anything, let's go ahead and see the uh, uh, the correlation between the variable themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and use the data analysis. Also, we call it the tool pack analysis, either one. So if you heard me uh, referring to it in different name, not to be confused, data analysis, tool pack analysis, either way. So I'm going to go ahead and get the input completely from here between the variable themselves and the three variable and I'm going to check the label. I'm going to go ahead and put the result directly into let's say G1 in this case here and obviously there is uh, between the salary let me go ahead and do that there is a very high correlation between the three of them so there's one here the salary and uh, the year of the school the salary and the book that being read and also between the year of schooling in the books of the reader is very high. So this is uh, the correlation. Also, I could do that by itself here without having to confuse myself with the Y. Uh, I could go ahead and run that correlation based on those two. And then instead of selecting Y along with it, I want to test if that is going to be, uh, you know, the two variable themselves. So let's go ahead and click this one here and put it right here. 
And obviously, it's just I took that portion basically to show you that there is a high correlation. Uh, there is many, many different ways in how to calculate, uh, you know, the degree of multicolonarity between uh, two or more independent variables, and I've studied maybe like 10 of them. Uh, the best one that I found, and uh, I always <coughs> believe, I'm a true believer, that if you have an open source uh, uh, software like uh, Gretel, and the one we have been using for this class is to use it uh, if it has, whether it's required or not. Of course, Excel would be the, the better choice in this case. Uh, 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 I noticed that if I have to, to prove to you all the calculation that required to prove the multicolonarity in Excel, it's going to take me for a long, long time. So I'm going to go ahead and do it directly in uh, Gradle, and it should not take at all, uh, just maybe like a few seconds. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read this data uh, directly in, uh, it's called school. And uh, Gradle now, uh, if you have not uh, been aware of it, does open Excel file. Uh, a couple years ago, was not able to do that, so they added that functionality. Not only the uh, compatible traditional file, but uh, the newer file with the uh, 2007 and above. Uh, so I haven't really used Gradle with the 2016, so I don't know if it's going to give me some problem reading files from 2016 or not. But if the extension is uh, XLSX, uh, then it should not be a problem since since it is part of the list that is available. So I'm going to go ahead and say Open Data. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, my user files quickly. Here we go. Uh, quickly, quickly quickly and quickly and quickly and data files and notice here I have to change when you save those file as an XLS to the right extension which is XLS and here we go I hope I could see here we go we have school and just accept that open it please look at this and just uh, take the default as it is uh, close it in this case, and imported have been uh, interpreted. Say thank you and leave it as a cross-sectional because I'm not doing time series now. We will be doing that soon. Forward, apply, and we're closing, and we already have the data now ready to be processed however we want. So we have the price right here. Click it. We have the year of schooling right here, and we have the, also the book uh, books read uh, very very easy the very first thing that you have to do is to run the model and we're going to do it as the ordinary least square which is really the simple not simple a uh, multi multiple uh, linear regression and I'm going to go ahead and please make sure that you understand that that the price is my dependent school or uh, your schools is going to be coming to the uh, the independent variable is the number one independent variable. This is the second one. And we're going to go ahead and run it. So notice uh, <coughs> there is clear significance that uh, the year of school is really a significance. It's very, very small value. The books are uh, read. Uh, it's, uh, it doesn't have a significance in it. So but this is not my concern at this moment. So uh, at the, at the my mace, mostly is my concern to see the color, uh, culinarity and see if it's acceptable or uh, if it does exist there, meaning if it's acceptable for us to run the data or the data itself really not valid because years of schooling and books of read are really depending uh, in each other. So this is where is the secret. Uh, this just took me a while to figure that out. Uh, test is really after you run the ordinary least square you have to deal with another window which is this and right here is the secret uh, culinarity right there and here we go it says here values that is greater than 10 uh, may indicate a culinarity and as a result uh, both of them are way too high 189, 189, that's very, very high for us to accept. Uh, and therefore, they are actually uh, have a problem. We do have a problem because uh, we know now that people who have high school 
uh, I mean, not high school, uh, uh, years of schools, very high year of school, like uh, doctorates or master degree. Uh, they read more uh, automatically based on this data, based on this observation. So the people who read more books, they have higher numbers, so they explained each other. Uh, uh, also, they have, of course, explained the salary in this case, but uh, because the interdependency or the uh, dependency on each other, uh, we're talking about the independent variable are dependent on each other, and that's what caused the uh, collinearity, and that's really where we should uh, uh, reconsider uh, evaluating the study and maybe come up with uh, a different type of data. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and do another one very quickly. Uh, this is, is going to be a different file, but uh, it's a larger number of data. That's fine. I'm going to be uh, attaching this file. I downloaded it also. Uh, you will see uh, it's the crime with the six, seven, six different variables. I'm going to treat X as Y in this case. And I ended up downloading it from uh, the references live in the American Small City. By So this is the reference right here. So this is the data. And I took actually the X, Y, Z. I mean X1, X2, X3, uh, and I change them to meaningful name. Uh, but I'll go ahead and run see if there is any clarity between uh, those variables. So the first thing that I need to make sure is to see if the, the uh, correlation among these variables is uh, very high, like among themselves. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run uh, this through the data, data analysis, and I'm going to go ahead and do the correlation. And now I'm going to get the, this are actually the six of them. And I'm going to treat them as the R columns. And I'm going to go ahead and put the results somewhere here and see how is the correlation between the six variables. Uh, notice uh, there is some sort of correlation between the violence of crime and the number of uh, the police funding. Uh, there is also a uh, very low correlation, probably if, through everything except this one here and this one here, the 25 years and older, and also the 25 years with college degree. So there is some kind of correlation, but most of the correlation, if you see, they're very low correlation. You know, except for some of them, those are kind of like acceptable here and here and here. So again, uh, I could spend some time trying to explain the model. Uh, I would like you to take your time and go ahead and read what each variable stands for. If you want to understand something uh, econ uh, concerning econometrics based on this data, that would be a great thing to do. But now for this videos and for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and run that. Uh, as a test of multi collinearity uh, because we want to see if those variables are dependent on each other. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Uh, the beauty of this example has six variables, as you notice. So also to remind myself, this is the file called crime. So I'm going to go ahead and run it and start with uh, Griddle. I'm going to go ahead and open. Of course, I'm going to close this first of all because that's a different screen. And of course, if you do know that a Gradle, if you have a file open, when you open another file, it's going to close the previous one. So I'm going to go ahead and open uh, the crime uh, <coughs> file. And we're going to go directly to my uh, hard disk. And here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and change the extension to XLS. It is XLSX, so it's going to be here open. And I'm going to go through the routine by accepting everything and say, OK, thank you. And well, here we go. Here we go. And close and we're waiting. So we have uh, actually uh, seven variables. The first one is the total number of crimes. That is my Y, my y, ver uh, my y variable. That's the dependent variable. Uh, I'm going to first of all do the same thing I did in the previous example to run it as ordinary least square. And we're going to go ahead and put the total crime as the Y. And these, I'm going to press the shift key 
to select multiple multiple of them if you can see here multiple of them and move them all together at once or you could click on them uh, one at a time let's see uh, there are uh, some of them has significance and contribution to the model some of them they don't for example the number of the year here the years uh, concerning what it is this is also not a significant this is not significant this is not significance but we want to see if even though with that much insignificance uh, that we have we need to be able uh, to uh, see if we have uh, uh, collinearity between the data itself so i'm going to go ahead and test and click on collinearity and notice uh, none of these uh, basically exceed the number or the value of 10. So the, even though they don't have a significant, which is another reason to uh, discard some of these variables, uh, we will be able to uh, show you here in this case that uh, these variables, the independent variable, they don't depend on each other, which is it's good to know uh, if there's uh, two variables are not depending on each other. So that's mean each one has its own contribution to uh, the regression, if there is a regression, if it's significant regression. And by now, we should be stopping here. The only thing that we need to do is to play with it. Uh, thanks to Griddle as an open source uh, uh, econometrics uh, software that allow us to uh, figure out the uh, collinearity without having to really go through many, many calculations. Again, uh, efficiency is to use the most <coughs> the your available resources for the highest outcome, and that's basically what a grader was for this time. Thanks a lot.